Prehistoric Peeps from 1905 is widely thought to be the first ever screen depiction of dinosaurs. A lot of websites list it as a lost film, one of the many films from the silent era of cinema that are sadly long gone. But the film is not lost. I know this because I have seen it. It still exists and is publicly accessible to view, although not on the internet. Two 35mm copies of Prehistoric Peeps are held by the British Film Institute, more commonly known as the BFI. Thankfully, they have also made an MP4 copy that you can watch. Now in order to do so, you have to go to London and go to the BFI Rubin Library, which is situated within the BFI Southbank Cinema. In the Rubin Library, you can go to one of the computer desks and there you can view Prehistoric Peeps. It's easy and it's free. I live in London, so getting to the BFI was not a challenge, but of course, if you don't live in or near London, being able to watch Prehistoric Peeps is a touch more difficult. I'm afraid, unlike every other entry in this series, I cannot actually show you the footage from this film because it's only viewable in the library, and attempting to remove anything from the BFI is punishable by death. However, I did make extensive notes and I can describe it to you in a lot of detail. The film itself was produced by the Hepworth Manufacturing Company owned by Cecil Hepworth, a pioneering figure in the early British film industry, and was directed by Lewin Fitzhammond who worked for Hepworth as his principal director. The film is based on a comic strip by Edward Tennyson Reed that appeared in the Satirical Punch magazine. This is fascinating because it perhaps places Prehistoric Peeps as not just the first dinosaur film, but a first comic book film as well. Maybe. To be honest, a lot of talk of what was the first film to do certain things is always going to be ambiguous when it comes to the silent era due to the huge amount of films that have been lost. Information available online for the credits of prehistoric peeps list a giant and an ape man, but I saw neither in the film, which implies that the version I saw may not be complete. Though what I did see ran a bit under 4 minutes which matches with my research on the runtime and the film made clear narrative sense so the ape man and giant listed in the credits are a bit of a mystery to me but I endeavour to look into it further. As I can't show footage I'm going to have to resort to using stock photos instead. I apologise of course but attempting to take prehistoric peeps from the BFI is quite literally a crime against cinema. The film begins in a dramatic cave filled with... Oh fuck, how do I pronounce this? Stalactites. Filled with stalactites. Film begins in a dramatic cave filled with stalactites. Stalactites. Stalactites? Come on. Stalactites. 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 Cave is created by what appears to be a fairly detailed painted backdrop. Into the scene, a smartly dressed man descends from the top right of the frame on a floating chair. He stands up and motions the chair to ascend up and away again and the chair dutifully floats out of frame. An effect executed it seems by a wire or string attached to the chair. The man moves to centre frame and starts examining what appears to be some dinosaur bones on the floor. He does a little jig, wipes his brow with a cloth and then lays down at the right of the frame and places the cloth over his face. Then our first dinosaur appears. What's clever is that this dinosaur has been in the frame all along. What appeared to be a rock on the floor now rises to reveal it is, in fact, the head of a dinosaur, which gets up and chases the man around in a circle. This is actually a good reveal. I find it amusing that the first dinosaur ever seen on screen was not immediately visible. For a moment reminds me of this scene from Peter Jackson's 2005 King Kong where a part of the scenery is revealed to be the head of a V-Rex. I don't know if Peter Jackson has seen prehistoric peeps so I have no idea if it's a direct inspiration. Chances are it's just a coincidence, but it's interesting and cool nonetheless. The dinosaur is quite clearly two people in a pantomime-like costume, not unlike how you would see a horse on stage. The costume has weird bumps and a clamshell-like head and is not menacing, but it's clear this film is not really going for menace as the manner in which it chases the man is humorous. A nice cut brings us to an exterior shot scene as the man escapes the cave with the dinosaur pursuing. The chase scatters a bunch of cave people but the man turns and manages to shoot the dinosaur dead. A jump cut to the same setup which may be simply due to missing footage shows the man celebrating with the cave people but a large long necked dinosaur, once more portrayed by two people in a costume, approaches from the rear. This moment once more prefigures a common suspense technique. The man is unaware of the dinosaur approaching him from behind, like this moment from Halloween or 
countless other horror films. Another jump cut to the same setup, once more possibly due to missing footage, shows the man collapsed on the floor as another dog sized dinosaur appears from the bottom left of the frame. The man and cave people then flee, running towards and out of the frame. The long necked dinosaur pursues, and then another large dinosaur with a massive head appears again seemingly two people in a costume. It also gives chase, but amusingly trips over a part of the scenery before carrying on. A new shot shows a clearing with the man and the cave people fleeing through it. They run past both the long necked dinosaur and a new dinosaur created via the same pantomime technique. It has big cartoonish eyes and with fur or tendrils that make it look not dissimilar to Dougal from the Magic Roundabout. Hilariously, also pursuing the man and the cave people in the shot is a giant chicken, which is just a single person in a chicken suit in a highly amusing visual. We then cut to a strange shot of the massive head dinosaur we saw earlier, slightly off frame and moving forwards with something strange in the background, possibly another dinosaur, it's hard to tell due to the degradation of the picture. Now there's a shot of all the dinosaurs running through a clearing with the exception of the initial one that was killed by the gun. We briefly see the dog-like dinosaur at the rear and can plainly see it as a person on all fours. Now we cut to the modern world in a stately dining room with a man asleep on a table, implying that it was all a dream. To the right of the frame is a model dinosaur as well as an advert for a show featuring a creature with the name Hepworthosaurus, presumably a fun reference to the production company or Cecil Hepworth himself. The man's wife attempts to wake him up but is unable to. She ponders hitting him with a dinosaur bone before using a spray of water that does the trick. The man awakens and the film ends. One can't really discuss prehistoric peeps or judge it critically as one would most films. It was crafted during an era where cinema was still new and pioneers such as the Lumiere brothers, George Méliès, Alice Guy Blanchet and Edwin S. Porter were crafting the techniques and concepts that constitute the medium as we know it. What prehistoric peeps does is provide a fun little story. It uses techniques to create suspense that are still often used by modern filmmakers. And in terms of dinosaur films, it's truly pioneering. This is the first time a film depicted the erroneous yet enjoyable image of ancient humans existing alongside dinosaurs, one that would persist within dinosaur cinema. This is the first time a dinosaur chased a human on screen. The human sized chicken feels like a perhaps unwitting first cinematic depiction of the idea that dinosaurs are birds. The dinosaurs themselves are not a particularly amazing effect, they are just pantomime creatures, the suits are baggy and not really very detailed, but as the story is a deliberate bit of farce, they fit the tone of the work. If you're in the South Bank area of London at any point, it is so easy to access this film and I think it's worth doing so if you're curious. The South Bank is just a lovely place to walk around anyway, so what finer excuse to go there? If you're on holiday in London with your partner, you can say to them, honey. Let us walk together by the River Thames and then go into the BFI library and watch the influential piece of dinosaur cinema, Prehistoric Peeps, from 1905. There is nothing more romantic than that. The next potential dinosaur film is a 1908 film called Prehistoric Man. I can find very little information on this one. It is said to be about an artist who draws a prehistoric man who proceeds to come to life and wreak havoc. This is finally put to a stop by the artist drawing a prehistoric creature that may or may not be a dinosaur, which then proceeds to eat the prehistoric man. If anyone watching this has information on this film, do let me know. It may be the first time a dinosaur ever ate a human on screen. Next time, we look at a film that is incredibly influential in the realms of animation, filmmaking, as well as dinosaurs. It's Gertie the Dinosaur. See you then.